women's resilience, abilities and strengths have often been appreciated in times of crisis. Unfortunately, most cultures and societies, historically and traditionally, have always depicted women as the first sex, identifying their vulnerabilities as the weaknesses that distinguish them from men. The COVID-19 pandemic has once again given visibility to the resilience, endurance, and abilities of women. But why should societies appreciate women more in times of emergency? Why aren't we capable, as a global human family, to realize once and for all that women are the necessary half of what constitutes and what ensures progress and well-being for all? How can we mistake the invaluable love that a mother gives to her children? An act, why is it considered as an act of weakness? Our world and our societies are in their need of respect, love, and dignity. How can we continue to ignore that women constitute half of the world's population and that humanity cannot afford the absence of women in leadership? I urge or our male leaders to come to terms with the need for women, to be at the front, alongside men, to be an integral part of the think tanks for the much needed recovery plans. COVID-19 is showing us the beauty of the strength of women as frontliners, as being the brave people of the world that are not afraid to face the dangers and the risks of the multitude situations that are arising from one minute to the other. According to UN Women, Women make up almost 70% of the healthcare workforce. Women have shown and are showing not only resilience and bravery, but also impeccable intelligence in the rapid search for solutions to this horrendous virus that is threatening humanity. On the other hand, we must also acknowledge that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a profound negative impact on women across the world in more ways than one. Women still carry the weight of taking care of the sick and the vulnerable. And with the closure of schools, their unpaid workload at home increased drastically. Mothers have had to shoulder immeasurable burdens during lockdowns. Mothers had to become the teachers of their own children. Mothers have had no choice other than giving up their financial independence to take care of their children, and in particular, of their children with disabilities or children with learning difficulties. Research is showing that women have been and are still being impacted much harder. Women and children are struggling with new swaths of poverty and material deprivation. Women who were pre-pandemic lived in disadvantaged situations are even more negatively affected. Economic insecurity has increased significantly. Social isolation has also increased the risk of domestic abuse and violence. Women are trapped in confinement with their perpetrators. On the other hand, I must acknowledge the few female political leaders who have been handling the COVID-19 crisis admirably. Their leadership qualities, coupled with empathy and compassion, has made their countries and people stand out. This is also a time for reflection. This is the time to ensure that policy measures and our world's recovery plans embrace a gender lens, bringing in the unique perspectives and aspirations of all women. The international community and national governments must live up to their commitment to effectively implement the United Nations Agenda 2030. I will end my contribution by quoting Nelson Mandela when he said, social equality is the only basis of human happiness. We owe social equality to each and every one of us. We owe it especially to our girls and boys.